Hey, Cousin Jack here with another episode of Woodcarving Weekly, and this week we're going to talk about inspiration and how you can draw inspiration from things around you for sure. We'll visit with Logue's Carving Club, old school carving, and a number of other things. And of course, we'll spin around the internet and we'll introduce you to a folk art carver along the way. Oh, by the way, I should mention all of the resources that I mentioned today. The links will be right below this video in the description and then also down in the comments section for you. Let's get started. Yeah, you know, one of the big challenges that some carvers face is sort of a project paralysis where they get to a point in a project and they're not really sure on how they're going to proceed. There's a clarity, let's say, around the next step in the project. And there are some times where carvers run into situations where they're just in a rut. They have a block and they're not sure exactly what to carve for their next project. This kind of paralysis can really be a problem if you're a carver who's up against a deadline and you have to get something finished. Maybe it's a commission piece or there's a special event or show coming up and the deadline is approaching. Well, over at Stinnett Sticks, Mike Stinnett has a brand new video and he shares with us the surprising inspiration for his latest project. Now the project is a diorama of a little character and a scene with a mushroom and some other things around it. And the surprising piece of this is the source of his inspiration. It comes from a storybook. And that storybook was written and illustrated by the person who's been editing his videos for the past 10 years or so his daughter, Teresa. Now, in the video, Mike is showing the carving and how he's fitting everything together. And he shares some wonderful tips along the way, like how he uses graphite paper to help ensure a good fit between the pieces of the diorama, and how he uses different types of finish before and after painting, depending upon the kind of texture that he's looking for. So there's always something to learn with these videos from Mike. It's definitely worth a look. Teresa also appears in this video. Not only is she a, an accomplished writer and illustrator, she started being a self-published author back when she was just 18 years old. So I think you'll enjoy this video. Go take a look. Well, up next we'll feature the Old School Carving YouTube channel. That's a channel that was created by a Ukrainian carver by the name of Vladimir. And in his most recent video, he's showing you how he's carving some grapes on the vine. This is a relief carving. And you'll see him basically showing how he transfers the pattern onto the block of wood, how he's glued a, a separate piece of wood onto the back in order to mount that into his carving vise. And of course, he shows you the carving process. Now he's using just hand tools nothing else. And like most European carvers, he tends to use primarily gouges and chisels for most of the work. So what you'll see with this video, there's no talking, but you'll definitely hear the sound of very sharp tools slicing through the wood. Near the end of the video, he adds a little bit of music in the background. It's a pretty nice video. I think you'll enjoy it. Have fun. Well, Ken over at the Whittling Woods YouTube channel, has a little bit of a dilemma on his hand. It was a windstorm that came along and knocked down his dogwood tree. But he made the best of it. He took his saw, cut off one of the branches, and sat down with his Rough Rider pocket knife to whittle a hillbilly. When life gives you lemons, <laughs> whittle a hillbilly. Well, anyway, this is sort of an impromptu video where Ken is taking advantage of the situation and doing a little carving. Like I say, it's impromptu, not as much of a tutorial as some of his other videos, but it's still pleasant. Just a carver, a tree branch, and a pocket knife. And Ken provides some commentary throughout the video as well. Go take a look. Well, up next we'll visit Croatia, where Dane Lacina from the Dane's Spoons YouTube channel is demonstrating a very traditional skill called coal roasting. So Dane has a coffee scoop that he carved earlier. In this video, he's applying some decorative markings on the handle of the scoop using a traditional method called coal roasting. 
goes way back to the Vikings. Anyway, in the video you'll see him sort of freehand drawing the shape of a flower and some other shapes onto the handle of this coffee scoop. And then he uses the tip of his wood carving knife to sort of etch in or cut in the lines of those shapes. Once that's finished, he applies some finely ground coffee to fill in the gaps. And then after that, he applies some flaxseed oil, also known as food grade linseed oil. I think you'll enjoy this video. It's a pretty impressive and relaxing video. Uh, there's no talking, just something you probably will enjoy. And if you've never tried coal roasting, you might want to give it a shot. Uh, aside from ground coffee, you can also use finely ground cinnamon. That works just as well. Go take a look. Well, up next, we'll kind of introduce you to a folk art carver by the name of Doug Fratty. And I want to give a shout out to Mark Cahoon. Mark reached out to me and kind of enlightened me about Doug Fratty. And here's what he, he told me. He says, hello, Cousin Jack. I recently discovered a wonderful wood carver. I wanted to let you know about him so you could give him a look. It's Doug Fratty art, and I really love the folk art style of Doug's art. Well, I did. I went out and took a look and uh, did a little research, and I want to share some of that with you today. So Doug lives in Maine. His studio is in a barn. Uh, he lives in the countryside there. And the materials that he carves come from his local area. Now, most of the things that he's using as far as the materials are one or two centuries old. We're talking about ancient wood. Some of it's pine or poplar or other hardwoods, and it comes from things like an old wooden chest or old broken furniture, you name it. And you'll see that his folk art style is unique, somewhat simple, and straightforward. I think you'll enjoy looking at some of Doug's artwork. So I'll have a link for you. You can go and check out Doug Fratty's art. But thanks again to Mark for sharing this resource with us. Well, next we'll visit with Logue's Carving Club. That's a YouTube channel created by a guy named Logan. Now, you used to think it was Logs Carving Club? It's Logs, as in Logan. Anyway, if you've never seen this channel, um, you might want to visit. Logan is a power carver, and he's got a brand new video. And he's talking about Dremel bits. And the title of his video is How to Use Every Dremel Bit. Anyway, in the, in the video, as you might expect, he kind of shows all the various bits, talks about what they're used for and how to use them. He does some demonstration along the way. And he said his goal when he put this video together was to create the most comprehensive Dremel bit video available on YouTube. And I think you'll see some pretty slick editing. Logan adds some humor in this video as well. And it's probably worth a look. You may even learn a little bit about some of these Dremel bits and burrs. Enjoy. Well, up next we'll visit with a Polish carver at the RI Woodcarving Channel. This time around, we'll see the carver putting together some really nice slices into a hunk of wood to make a very decorative and unique looking ornament. This is sort of a time-lapsed video. All of the carving is done with hand tools and the video is just under two minutes long. So if you enjoy seeing a skilled woodcarver at work, I think this one's definitely worth a look. Well, folks, as always, I want to thank you for joining us this week. And I want to encourage you to hit that like button if this is the kind of content you'd like to see more of. And that will help other carvers kind of spread the word. If you want, subscribe to the channel. It's completely free. And you can unsubscribe whenever you feel like it. That's it for today. We'll see you next week.